Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. So I've just been doing a bit of research and, well, I already knew this already, but as many people pointed out, a manure storage point is required. Problem is it's £25,000 and we only have 20491 So I need to generate some money before we can place it. Also, where do we put it? I think the obvious place to put it is just here. But despite it being November, we do have grass, so I think we should use this grass before it disappears for the winter. Um, but yeah, I also need to get the worker going with the mulcher. Ideally on this field, and I mustn't let it go over the grass because it will very nicely mulch the grass away. So the McCormick first of all. Let's get the mulcher attached to the back of it. Now I did say in the previous episode that we do need to get rid of one of the two vineyard tractors just so we can make, get some money back some much needed money and I suggested getting rid of the fence but then I realised after recording the video that I probably shouldn't have said that because we've just put the money into upgrading the engine which was quite expensive uh, so maybe the Landini is the tractor that should be replaced I do like the Landini but really we can't just go on it because uh, we can't just keep it because I like it Unless I can find a decent source of income before we become super desperate, one of them will have to go. Hopefully none of them will go, but it's just a current plan. Okay. Uh, I, well, I suppose that uh, because I did upgrade the engine, it's added value, but we'd never get the money back. So I, th I think the fence is probably going to have to stay. Okay, so just to uh, help the worker out, I'm going to go across here. Probably just go up and down twice, that should be enough. It's mulching very nicely. Nowhere near as obvious as when you mulch the sorghum, which we will also be doing. But this is the priority. Because this field needs to be cultivated so that we can put potatoes in, whereas the other fields don't really need to be cultivated because I'm hopefully going to be getting a direct drill. And yes, it will have no chance of uh, mulching the grass because not only will I be nearby, I will actually be in that field, so I'm going to be cutting it anyway. We should have cut it before it gets down there. Anyway, good to hear about Shadow Play, the NVIDIA Experience video recorder, screen recorder. It definitely is good. I highly recommend it to anybody looking for a good uh, video game screen recorder. Although I think it can record desktop as well. A really decent piece of software. Right, there we go. Brilliant. Um, so, yes, next up, we must really crack on with that grass. So I need to drop the front weight off somewhere. I tend to put most stuff in the grass over here, so we'll put it over here. And I haven't forgotten about the stump grinding. We do still need to do that. Again, money has been the issue. Um, yes, if it's not a priority, I shouldn't really be doing it. So we will indeed do the uh, stump grinding. The moment we have enough money spare to be able to be renting a stump grinder. Hopefully it won't be too long, it might even be today. We'll just have to see. Anyway, let's pop that front mower on the front. There we go. So we need to get both of these unfolded. It's already looking so much better this field now it's been mulched. I always think it looks nice, it's a nice golden colour. And although yes, we probably wouldn't be making hay in uh, November. I am going to at least try to do it. I'm sure that when I actually get the tether into here, it will convert the grass to hay, because uh, it's going to be very handy to have for our total mixed ration. And the only reason for doing this really is just so that we don't lose the grass, because it would be a bit of a shame, since we have a lovely, fully grown crop of grass, which I think has also been fertilised, just to be uh, wasted, and also we, we have quite a, a long time before we can mow again. April, May time. And yet where we are now is probably where the manure pile is going to be. Okay, I need 
to make sure I lift both the mowers at the same time. Used to work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was working before. Uh, something must have changed. Oh, of course, when I did the patch, it reset all of my uh, key bindings. I had to change a number of them. But actually, yeah, yeah, that's not the only thing. I have noticed that the indicators work on some machines. I've set my key bindings again to the flappy paddles on the steering wheel. Some machines, they work. This tractor, for example, they, they do work. But others, like the lorry, they don't work with the same key. Or with the same control, in this case. So, interesting. And, yeah, they, that doesn't seem to work. The rear one picks up. So that's interesting. I will just have to uh, adjust them again, I suppose. Anyway, looking good. I think in this next time lapse, I will possibly ted it and maybe even do the rowing as well. So we'll be straight on to bailing and we'll be storing the bales just there. We're pretending, <laughs> well, I'm pretending there is a tarpaulin on top of them just to sheet them over. But, uh, yes, obviously we can't sheet in the game. So, yep, just get this done, and then I have something very interesting to show you. Right, so I think it's probably best just to leave that there until we've picked up this swath here, otherwise we're going to be making a bit of a mess. Uh, so yes, I need to now make sure that does not continue because it's going to be uh, encroaching into this field. Might just about make another pass down here without destroying this swath, we'll just take a look and see. Um, but yes, the thing I wanted to show you was a uh, pack of English sheds or barns by Lancy Boy. So a massive thank you to Lancy Boy for sharing this with me, I'm sure it will be coming very soon. So we'll just take a quick look. Obviously we can't afford them today, but we can see them. That's going to be taking it, isn't it? Yeah. Better stop there. We can finish that little piece when we've done the bailing. So yeah, let's just uh, take a look here. So into sheds, and you can see here we have a large barn. Just change the camera angle. Huge. And uh, yeah, these are fairly affordable, really, when you consider this one here is 340,000. And then this big one here is only 140,000, so a good saving to be made. We would probably be getting something like this here. That's perfect for us. Let's just get the sun on the correct side. There we go. Lovely. So, as soon as we have available money, we will be getting this. I think it would be perfect to have it somewhere. Well, if we can have the manure just there, we could extend the yard. We could have this sort of there. Because then we could still drive through it. Possibly. <laughs> I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, that would be... Um, or, or we could just have that there. And then have the manure in front. Many things to consider. But yeah, thank you so much to Lancy Boy for sharing these. They are absolutely lovely. 
We have 61% straw left in the baler. So that's going to be converted into hay. Which is, uh, yeah, it's good. That's actually a really sneaky way of getting a better product. A higher value product. If you were to do it with silage, you'd be winning even more. Okay, so yeah, the first bit that I want to pick up really is this swath just over here. Although I'll probably just do this whole area. Come back to the rest of it. Pretty wide. Yeah, so we have managed to get hay in November. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I think, for me at least, it's a good thing because this is this is good for the farm. Maybe you can get hay in November. If it was a really, really mild and dry November, it might be possible. But we won't have too many bales because I'm set to the maximum capacity, which is good because then we don't have to store as many. They all take up space, and I should probably start putting them with the straw bales because that's sort of become the bale storage area. Okay, that's the first to drop. I need to get a cultivator going in this field. As mentioned before, I'm still a bit undecided as to whether or not I'm going to have a second field of potatoes. It really comes down to the size of the harvester. We will be renting the biggest one. So we'll have to see. I can almost bail this anyway without windrowing it. To make it easier though, I will use the windrow, we can get closer to the hedge. Um, and I've checked the price for silage, and the silage price is currently quite good, so I could actually sell a bit of silage to fund the rest of the manure pit. I definitely don't want to be selling the hay bales, but I think we do have quite a bit of silage. And I've caught up. There we go. So, yes, I'm using the Fent, but with no problem at all. With its nice, powerful engine, it's actually more than capable of running it. It's just the size of it. It just looks like it shouldn't be able to run a Windrow. But it's actually a powerful tractor. It's over 100 horsepower. Get back for the final piece. And we're done. Brilliant. So I will get this taken back to the farm. It means I can use this fent for many more jobs rather than just always sticking with vineyard and olive grove work. We can do windrowing, tedding, possibly some mowing. Could do fertilizer spreading. Just because it looks like a vineyard tract, it doesn't mean it's restricted to only vineyard work. Something I need to uh, keep remembering. Ah, oh, really bad at reversing this thing. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's see here. Just got that piece and then that piece there. And then, we're done. We'll go to see how many bows we've made in total. The next bow is about to drop. Eventually. I'll get it dropping. And yes, it looks like it's going to be good timing. 82% of a bale. So we should be able to finish that bale. Lovely. And then the big push. There we go. Should be able to slip out the back. Uh, so in total, I probably don't need to have a look at the statistics, but we have got six bells.
If you're wondering about the mouse cursor being in the wrong place, I explained it in the previous episode. It's just because of my screen resolution is not matching the game resolution. Ah, oh, look at that. Away with you. We'll pick up these bales in a minute. I just want to get this finished off. If we then sell some silage while the price is still good, we can get the manure sorted out. And any leftover money I could spend on renting the stump grinder. Although I did hear from one of my viewers a few episodes back, and they said that the stump grinder was actually worse than the forestry mulcher. So it would be tempting to go for the forestry mulcher. However, it's, I think it's about £12,000 more. So it's a more expensive alternative. There we go. Although it has actually made me quite interested in using the stump grinder just to see why the forestry mulcher is better. Because really all I want to do is grind the stump away and if it does that, great. If I was to hazard a guess, I would say the reason why this viewer thinks that the forestry mulcher is better is because it's more responsive. I should think it's uh, just a case of dropping it down close to the stump and it will grind it away. Whereas the stump grinder might have to be precisely on top of it, but yes, we'll have to uh, have a bit of a test. Anyway, the JCB is just here. Uh, we do need the bucket, so I'll take that over there. I think my bell spike is already over there, so that's good. What a lovely golden field. Well, we have the stump grinder. I did have the bell spike. I keep losing it. Oh no, I know where it is. It's it's in a place where I knew I'd remember it. In a bale. Although, as it turns out, I forgot about it. If I always stick it in a... Oh, crikey. As I was saying, if I always stick it in a bale, I will always know where it is. That was close. Right, so we're going to go three high, two stacks of three, put next to the straw bales, so it's probably going to be best if I approach from the road. Try and make this as neat as possible. Of course, yeah, sharp driving can make them slip around, but if you do another sharp opposite turn. Uh, you can sometimes get it st <laughs> straightened up. Anyway, that's, that is neat enough. Yep, indicator works on this. Actually, the only issue I think I've had is with the lorry. So the, the lorry does seem to be problematic when it comes to indicators. But it was fine. The final three. Yeah, that stump there is the only one which is really annoying. I have to drive over it when I enter the yard sometimes. And my bales have shifted once again. But, yeah, that's a, a nice little stockpile for the winter. Should keep us going. Um, so, yes, next job is to take off the bale spike. We'll put it into a bale, as I said, so we, <laughs> so we know exactly where it is. You would hope that when I actually need it, I'm actually wanting to move one of those bales. So I'd just be in the right place anyway, but probably not. So we now have the bucket. I need the lorry, I need to empty the trailer. And then we can load up. How much do we have in here? 116,000 litres. Yeah, we can afford to sell one trailer load. 
23% barley. Uh, so yeah, the chickens didn't use quite as much as I thought they would do, which is good, because it has to get them through about six months, maybe even more. But if all the troughs were empty, it would probably get through our whole supply in one go. Okay, I think we're almost there. It does take a serious amount of loads with this little bucket. Well, it's actually quite a big bucket, but compared to the wheel loader with the big buck rake, this one is small. See how heavy it is on the tyres. I love how squishy the tyres look when it's full. Bouncy, bouncy. Very bouncy. Uh, anyway, yes, enough of that. Let's, uh, let's get this thing loaded up. This should be the last bucket load. Be surprised if that is uh, worthy of another bucket load. 98%. Well, it's going to seem silly not to fill it. Although, looking at it, that is totally full. Probably overloaded. So, how much of this bucket load will it take? I'm going to say 40%. So, we're going to be left with 60% in the bucket. Oh, look at that. That's the closest I've ever been. 59%. Uh, and yes, it is indeed raining. So that is 59,400 litres. And I believe the best place is actually not the livestock market where we normally go to. It is the biogas heating plant. So there's only like a pound in it, but... Well, I suppose that would only be £59 extra, but still, £59, it adds up. I will see you over there, we should probably put some lights on. The sunshine will return, but not yet. I'm not sure if I'm severely mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it used to take us to the actual biomass heating plant. It seems to now bring us to the BGA, so did Giants change that? I think they did, because I mistakenly came here in the first few episodes and, um, yeah, it wasn't the right place. Yeah, pretty sure they've changed it. And the money is coming in thick and fast. Money which we are pretty desperate for. Brilliant. That's going to be very helpful. £33,315 and still plenty left for the cows. In fact, there's more than enough. I could even sell more if I wanted to. So I think to finish off with, I'm going to try and grind those stumps away. It is overdue. We have the money, so... It's just, do I, do I rent the stump grinder or do I rent the forestry mulcher? We also do now have the money to repair the lorry. It's overdue. Uh, I could really tell it was struggling. So, how much is it going to cost? £4,588. Not too bad, really. Anyway, yes, let's get into the store. Get into the forestry equipment section. Okay, so that is a forestry mulcher. £24,500. Uh, another one here at 41 Ah, actually, no, I could use this one. I didn't realise there was a cheaper one. That is actually cheaper than the actual stump grinder. So it will be interesting. It's not going to be as aggressive, I wouldn't have thought, as this one here. It still requires 150 horsepower, though. I just hope it can reach high enough, because our other stumps are quite tall. So that is going to be the only limitation. £1,249. I will put it on the John Deere. That's how tall this machine. And probably on the front. Please reach high enough. 
Yeah, it's not really that high. I wanted to cut them lower, but it just wouldn't let me. That particular type of tree doesn't seem to cut at the base. At least the rain has stopped. So this is the first one. Let's take a look here. Ah. I didn't factor that in. Yes, of course, running a big, massive grinder on concrete is probably not the best idea. Luckily, we can get that fixed. And actually, I've been told by uh, many viewers to get the mod which allows you to do it for free. The uh, ground painting, ground texturing. Um, I think for that little patch, though, we can certainly get away with it. So let me just go into construction, landscaping, painting, concrete. And let's see here. Yeah, actually, if you come to uh, think about that from a realistic point of view, that was actually better because, after all, we had concrete around a stump. So, of course, we'd have to do some kind of groundwork. Yeah. Anyway, now for the big challenge. I had no doubt about it working on that one, but these ones over here are quite tall. UFO balloon. It's putting down a beam of light. Actually, looking at it again, they're not quite as tall as I remember them. But they're probably tall enough. <laughs> Ah. This is um, not a normal tree stump though, it's obviously not a tree which should be used for forestry. Oh, there we go, that's good. That's one removed. Maybe I can chop away at it with a chainsaw. I do have a sneaky trick at my sleeve, and that is just to uh, persuade the stump grinder onto them using super strength, but I don't want to do that. Ah yes, I can see we can put a nice cut in it there, so the tractor can climb up it. Save is using super strength. That might be good enough. If I do that to all of them, I'll just do that really quickly cut in as far as it will let me, which is about there. Yeah, that, that might work. Final stump, and we'll get back in the tractor, and we'll try it out. But either way, we're going to get it done today with this. We're not going to uh, waste money getting something else. It just needs to be... Can I adjust it anymore? Let's just see here. Won't go any higher, but this might work if I use the sort of grapple to climb up it. Ah, yes, brilliant. Yeah, it's an aggressive piece of machinery, very handy. Uh, it seems to work anyway. Yep, <laughs> that is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I'm not too sure if doing the cut has helped, or if it's just the grapple working. Some of them are still slightly too tall. It really is just the slightest bit of persuasion though, that gets it going. Um, so yeah, I think if I, if I was to buy something like this, I would actually go for this instead of the stump grinder. Because if we were clearing a large forest, it would be because we've done it for forestry. And I wouldn't have grown this type of tree. I'd have grown a spruce tree or a, well, a pine tree or a uh, fir tree or something. And just one left. It's looking really good. Is that going to do it? So close. Yeah, I should do it. Yes, brilliant. 
Okay, so we are done. All ground away. Uh, we might need it for future trees, like these trees over here. Next to the vineyard, I'm hoping to get rid of. But that will be sometime over the winter. So I will keep hold of this for now, just in case in the next episode, I do decide to uh, clear those trees just there. But I think that is going to do it for this video. Really impressed by this. An amazing piece of machinery. You would not want to get in its way. And that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.